friends, Casey in the kitchen. Let's make some cheddar broccoli risotto. So we're gonna make this today in our electric pressure cooker called the multi-cooker. You can do everything from soups and stews in here. You can make a whole meal. You can actually sous vide, proof bread, make yogurt, and even sterilize all in this amazing power tool. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on to the sear function, which is one of the many pre-programmed settings. So we set it to sear and push start, and that is going to go ahead and heat that inner pot. It's an inner stainless steel pot, a six quart uh, stainless steel pot, and we're gonna add some oil to it. We're gonna use our oil and vinegar dispenser, and here I'm just gonna push this together. Each time I push it in, it's a teaspoon, so we're gonna do three times, that's a tablespoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're gonna put that down in the bottom of this pot while it starts to heat up. All it's gonna do is count down the time for me. I know I have about two minutes before it's hot. It starts at 20, so by the time I get to 18 minutes, I know that's gonna be nice and hot and ready for my onions and peppers. So I have an onion already cut up and I'm gonna cut up this red bell pepper. Now, if your family doesn't love onions and peppers, you could also um, omit either one, of course, or you can cut this up a lot finer than I'm going to. We love onions and peppers, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit bigger, but you could always put these two through uh, a food processor. We have our manual food processor, nice and fine. It'll give all the flavor, but nobody will even know it's in there. So I just cut off the top of that bell pepper and all I'm gonna do is use our scoop loop, scoop out the inside here and toss that. And you see how fast and easy that was to scoop out that pepper. It would make great stuffed peppers. So scoop loop is two-sided. We're gonna go ahead and cut this into three parts and use our quick slice. So the quick slice you can use on tons of different stuff. You can slice up strawberries and hard boiled eggs and soft cheeses and tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, pound cake, tons of different stuff. You can make fajita peppers using this, or what I'm gonna do, instead of making longer strip peppers, I'm gonna put it back through there and do diced peppers. Really fast and easy to use that. So it's got those serrated blades on the inside there that really help. All you wanna do is rock it down. Don't push real hard, just let it do the work for you. And again, I'm gonna turn those a second time. And that way we have diced peppers. You can do mushrooms and olives in here as well. We just don't recommend really hard um, things like uh, onion, potato, because what you don't want is you don't want that blade to get off course because it is a very sharp blade and it will cut into this bottom part if you're not careful. That's why we just wanna let it do the work, put it down on there and rock it down into place. All right, one more, and then we are ready to put this down into our multi-cooker. Get all the bits and parts out of here. And this also goes through the dishwasher. Of course, take it apart, two different pieces, just like this, and it can go through the dishwasher. All right, so I can smell our oil is nice and hot, ready for me to add in our pepper and onion. We're just gonna pick up our flexible cutting mat. This is the uh, large size. They come in a set of three. All right, so we've got all of that down in there. And then the other thing we're gonna add to this is some fresh garlic. We're gonna use our garlic press. And all you gotta do is put this right down into there. Notice I didn't peel it or anything. Plunger goes on top, we squeeze that together. And all the good yummy garlic comes out and the peel is left inside. So then I'm gonna use the little tool that kind of nestles in the back there and just scrape that off. It looks like a Barbie hairbrush. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. You see the peel is left right down inside of there. So then I'm gonna scrape that out. This keeps you from having to touch the garlic and get sticky hands from the garlic. Smelly hands too. All right, second clove down in there. Squeeze it together, scrape it off, and we're done with the garlic. Add a quick stir. And again, this is just like searing like it does on your stove top, except we're saving ourselves one more uh, pan to have to wash at the end. All right. Next thing we're going to add is the rice. So this is the rice that I am using. It's the Arborio rice. Uh, it's a much creamier, it's made for risotto. It's a creamier rice. So you are gonna get that starchier effect with this. It is a cheddar broccoli risotto with chicken. So we have one cup measured out in our easy read measuring cups. We're gonna go ahead and add that in and also add in some salt using our salt pepper grinder here. I'm just gonna give it about seven or eight turns there, just like that. We'll stir that in just to get a little bit of a toast effect on the bottom of the rice. Then we're gonna measure out a tablespoon of Dijon mustard to go in here. Oh, 
I'm almost out. <laughs> All right, there we go. Perfect. Then we have our chicken and I have about a pound of chicken, which I've already cut up. Now, when I prep my chicken, I like to cut it when it is partially frozen. It actually cuts really, really nicely. So that's a little tip for you. So we're going to go ahead and add that in and let that finish searing just for another minute or two, just to get a little bit of color onto oops, the chicken and everything. All right, so we are ready to add in our last part before this pressure cooks. So this is three cups of chicken broth. That's gonna help to cook that rice and bring everything together. So give that a quick stir, and then we're gonna put the lid on and set it on the white rice setting, which cooks for four minutes, friends. <laughs> Super fast and easy. Now the thing with pressure cooking is you have to add in the time it takes to get up to pressure. So we're gonna put the lid on, cancel what it was on. It was on the sear setting, so we wanna stop that. But now we're gonna go ahead and turn this to the white rice setting. There's also a whole grain setting, which is how I make my brown rice. It is an automatic setup for four minutes. And then we're gonna go ahead and hold on that till it beeps, and it's gonna start building the pressure. Now this will tell you how far the pressure is because it's gonna fill up a whole pie and then once it's under pressure, it'll start counting down four minutes. Now what's gonna happen at the end of four minutes? Nothing, <laughs> there's no emergency. Um, it'll start slowly releasing, you won't hear it or see it, but uh, it'll start naturally releasing that pressure so that it doesn't remain under pressure or you can manually release the pressure here. So let's get this cooking. Okay, so that has cooked for, it came up to pressure and then it cooked for the four minutes and the timer has gone off, beeped at me. So what it's doing now is just counting up how long it's been sitting there. So like I said, nothing happens, no need to be scared of it at all. What I'm gonna do is actually manually release the pressure on this. Like I said, naturally right now, it is releasing pressure, but I want to speed up that process and add in the last couple of ingredients. So all we're gonna do is the pressure is gonna, or the steam's gonna come out right here. So I wanna make sure and take that out from underneath the cabinets, if you have it that way. And we just hit the steam release button. Not scary at all, it's <laughs> super safe to use. It's gonna release all that pressure and then we're ready to add in, um, we have two ounces of cream cheese, which I just cut up into smaller pieces so that it can mix easily. And then the recipe calls for two cups of chopped broccoli. I'm using fresh broccoli. You could also use frozen broccoli if you wanted to. I would maybe partially thaw that, if not all the way thaw. Uh, but I'm using fresh broccoli and instead of like two cups of broccoli, I'm using like four or five because we like our veggies. And then I also have shredded up some cheddar cheese on our adjustable grater here. Love, love that one. All right, so steam is released and I am ready to go ahead and take that lid off. I'm gonna just set that to the side out of the way. And I'm gonna add in, oh, first I'm gonna do is hit cancel again, because right now it's just on a warm setting. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna turn it back to the sear function so I get some heat underneath of it because we're gonna kind of cook that broccoli just for about five minutes. So let's go back to that sear setting right here and turn that on. We're gonna add in our cream cheese. Like I said, two ounces of that and go ahead and add in all of this good broccoli. The broccoli doesn't need that long to cook, especially if you do chop it up. The smaller it is, the quicker it will cook. And then I'm also gonna add in, this was a whole block of cheddar cheese and I only need about half of it, but I went ahead and shredded all of it because I'll use it in another recipe later. So then we're just gonna stir that around and let it all come together for about four or five minutes. All right, so that's been on the sear setting for about five minutes, and we are ready to do the final touch to this. I'm gonna take our citrus press. I have half of a lemon here. This goes in cut side down because that's where the juice comes out. And we are just going to press that fresh lemon juice right over the risotto, give it a nice stir, and it's gonna just bring out tons of freshness and flavor in that risotto. And we'll go ahead and hit cancel to stop that from the cooking process. And there we have our cheddar broccoli risotto with chicken in the multi-cooker in no time at all. Hope you love this recipe and let me know if I can help.